Hello, callers. Welcome to Viva Barca and welcome to another interesting episode where we are going to be discussing on the latest developing stories. We start with former Barca coach Ronald Koeman, who in a recent interview talks Messi. He talks about Pedri, Frankie de Jong, Sergio Roberto, Des, La Porta, Barcelona and many more. We are going to be discussing on what he had to say on those topics. Then secondly, talking on this transfer report, as it has been revealed that Barca tried to sign this Santos whiskey in January, but prioritized Gavi's contract registration. We are also going to be discussing more on that. So guys, before we get right into the full story, please do ensure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Turn on the post bell notification to always stay notified whenever I post a new video. Consider liking the video and please watch it right up to the very end. Following his dismissal as the manager of Barcelona, Ronald Koeman is now back at the helm of the Netherlands national team, taking over from another ex barca boss in Ries van Gaal. The Dutch tactician and club legend was appointed as the manager of the Catalan heavyweight in 2020 after Kike Setien was sacked. While Koeman led the team to the Copa del Rey in his debut season, he never looked like the right fit. And following a disappointing start to the 2021-22 campaign, Koeman was relieved of his duties by President Juan Laporta, with Xavi taking over from the Dutch tactician. Under Xavi, Barcelona had made a rapid stride and have already won the Spanish Super Cup while occupying the top spot in La Liga. During an interaction with Andy van der Mech, Koeman spoke about Barca's current situation under Xavi claiming that they were performing really well, um, but highlighting that he was not provided the same kind of squad during his tenure. Ronald Koeman said, Barca are now doing great. I watched Barcelona vs Real Madrid. They played amazing football. They are so good. But yeah, if you get up to 10 to 12 new players, things get a little easier, right? It depends on the quality of the squad. During my time, that was different. The Dutchman also spoke about his compatriot Frankie de Jong, who has gone from being transferable to the summer to an untouchable in Xavi's squad right now. Talking about the midfielder's performances, Coleman said, Frankie is great, I think he'll stay. He's deservedly playing so much. One of the biggest positives of the Coleman era at Barcelona was the emergence of Pedri. The Dutchman handed the midfielder his first team debut back in 2020, even though he was just 17, and the team is reaping the rewards of it. The Netherlands um, manager, who was previously sp sp spoken very highly of Pedri, opened up on the relationship between the young star and Lionel Messi. During their time together at the Camp Nou, he said, Messi was very humble. He immediately noticed Pedri's qualities and was willing to combine with him during games, unlike with some other players. Coman also expressed his surprise at the Oster of Sergino Des, a player he signed in 2020 from the Barca setup. The right back left the club on loan in the summer, joining AC Milan, but the manager claimed that Sergino Des was no worse than Sergio Roberto. He said, Des isn't any worse than Roberto. I didn't understand him leaving, he said. Coman's relationship with club president Laporta was not the easiest, and the manner of his sacking has seemingly made things more frosty, as the Dutchman said. After what happened with the president, I don't go to the Camp Nou nowadays. Ronald Koeman, yeah, we can see him speaking his mind and everything after his era. And uh, from the look of things, he's still not happy about the sacking. And we can see the way he ended the interview saying that he does not still go to the Camp Nou recently after the way he and the president, Laporta, ended matters. Um, by the way, Laporta is not the owner of Camp Nou. If you, can still, you can still go there and watch your match as a fan. Would they come and drive you or whatever? I don't know. But not, I don't think Coleman hates Barca because of that. You know, it's because of the president that he's not still happy. But I think if Coleman was a Barca fan, I don't know which team he supports. But if he is a Barca fan, I, I still don't believe that after what happened, he can you will leave or you will say, look, I'm, I'm not supporting Barca again. I don't think so. And if he's a Barca fan, I don't see any reason why he can't go to the Camp Nou to watch games or because of President Laporta. Um... Of course, 
Commons had some very, very interesting stuff there to talk about. I really like the fact that he was talking about Sergio Roberto and Sergio there saying that this is not worse than Roberto and he doesn't understand why Barca had to let go of this and not Sergio Roberto and so on and so forth. So, yeah, it's good. We can see the, the era after Coman were doing great. I think Xavi is more of a tactician. He more understands the Barca way of doing things more than Coman. And I think Coman also has a point in something. The fact that he said, look, I never had the same squad of players. And you, the new players definitely will make his work more easier. You know, and I, and I think that's true. Coman, we all know Coman is a very, very experienced manager. You know, Xavi is still a new, a new person in the job. Coman is somebody who knows who knows coaching, you know, like he's, 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 he's not naive. And I think that he never had that squad. Barca were, were full of, you know, shit players. And honestly speaking, I think Coman had never had that squad that we have now because we have one of the best squads in the world. And Javi's job is at least is easier. Then on to the next story of discussion. The closing days of the winter transfer window were hectic days for FC Barcelona. The management were forced to take an important call under pressure to either renew and register the contracts of existing prodigies or look for a replacement for the departed Memphis Depay. Eventually, the Catalans opted to register Gavi with the first team using the fair play margin generated by Depay's exit. Yet, there were a number of options explored before the eventual consensus over the Golden Boys renewal was reached. According to Joaquin Piera of Sport, Barcelona tried to bring in Santos' duel Angelo Gabriel to Spotify Camp Nou in January. The initial plan was to sign the 17-year-old wonder kid on the loan with an option to make it permanent at the end of the season for a fixed fee. The Brazilian outfit were willing to discuss terms over the forwards transfer. However, the deal fell apart because the board prioritized Gavi's renewal over discussing the options with Xavi Hernandez. Nevertheless, the club continued to follow the young star closely for the upcoming transfer windows. Barcelona have secured a preferential buy option and the right of first refusal for Angelo Gabriel. Should any club join the race for his signing? However, a final decision over his future will be made only in the summer. The 18-year-old has a deal until 2024 with Santos and broke into the first team Two years ago, since then, he has made 102 appearances for the first team, scoring three goals and registering nine assists. AC Milan, Nottingham Forest, PSG, Chelsea and Newcastle United are just a few of other clubs eyeing the right winger. It is safe to say that Barca are the most tempting option for the teenager's table. The question, however, is where Angelo will fit in, given that Barcelona already have Usman Dembele and Rafinha on the right flank. So guys, with that, we have come to an end of this episode. Thanks a lot for watching. Until next time. Bye-bye.